Podducer. What's up, guys? This is Podducer, the podcast for producers. Today we are joined by Buka. <laughs> Buka, what do you what do you do? What do I do? All right. Well, I'm a producer and DJ slash selector. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm actually one of my questions is, what's the difference between a DJ and a selector? Uh, I think DJing is really kind of like just like a like a constant mix of tracks right like you don't stop really right if you're selecting tunes well then you're just kind of like uh well yeah you take your you're selecting tunes and you let them play pretty much all the way through that's it and then like of course like then you talk a little bit or you have your mc talk a little bit and that's it selecting is more kind of like a sound system like jamaica sound system thing that's where i think it, it, it began like they would uh play like the original track right and then say a little something something flip the the record and then play like the dub or the version the the rhythm and then uh maybe they would have like an mc or a sing j and they're like just, just do their own thing it was pretty cool pretty cool hmm yeah i've definitely seen that i just didn't really know we would call that a selector. Yeah. Also, it's like a selector, like Select not a selector. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I actually saw, so like on your Instagram, there's some videos of people I would probably think are selectors. They have a DJ setups, but they're kind of like going in, playing a tune, talking, saying some stuff. Mm -hmm. It's almost like radio <laughs> more. It's a more little bit, yeah, yeah. You, Cause that is what they do also like they tell you a little bit about the track also like oh like so and so uh made it and blah 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 it's big tune big tune and big then, tune yeah, yeah. yeah flip it and then, well, here's the version and beep, 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 beep. yeah they got of course yeah we got the sirens too we got the sirens and then choo, 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 choo. okay okay and, <laughs> so you could potentially call yourself a selector and dj yeah. like in in the sense yeah, yeah, that like totally. it's somewhat interchangeable yeah okay okay cool um well there's a question that i ask all my guests and that is what was your first concert first concert oh damn Yo, what's up guys before we get into today's show i want to take a quick moment to talk about our sponsor quake as music producers and concert enthusiasts, we know how important it is to protect our ears. That's where Quake's Dub Muffs V2 come in. They aren't just any earplugs, they're a game changer. What sets Dub Muffs V2 apart, first off, their quality. They're better than any plugs I've ever used. I use them all the time. I have custom in-ear plugs. These are my main ones that I bring to shows. Um, you get premium sound clarity, preserving those crisp highs and deep lows, all while safeguarding your ears from damaging volumes. And the best part, they don't break the bank. Quality and affordability, son. Let's talk customization. Quake knows one size doesn't fit all. That's why they offer two sizes. Whether you're at an intimate gig or a massive festival, Dub Muffs V2 fit comfortably in your ears, making sure you're protected no matter how long the show lasts. Let's face it, we've all left concerts with ringing in our ears. It's not good, but it ends up happening. But it doesn't have to be that way. Protect your ears while enjoying the pure sound of music with Quake's Dub Muffs V2. As a special thank you to our listeners, Quake is offering an exclusive discount. Just use the code POD15 at checkout to save on your first purchase. As a motto of our show, make sure you protect your ears. Now let's get back to the show. Also, I just want to let you guys know before we get back to the show, shameless plug, we are doing our first round of merch. They are green corduroy ball caps with the Podducer logo embroidered on them. They're pretty sweet. Um, they cost $35. And if you purchase one, it really helps us out to keep doing what we are doing here. You can find a link to purchase one in the link tree on any Podducer social media. 
like I said, your support really helps. Um, okay, sorry, shameless plug. We'll get back to the show. I think my first concert was actually a festival. That's, uh, that happens. Yeah. yeah, it was a radio festival in Florida when I used to live uh, uh, near the Everglades. And, uh, oh man, I can't, I can't remember who, what, what the name of the radio station was. Well, anyway, but like, let's see, it was a bunch of like punk and rock bands. Like, uh, I don't know if you remember Jimmy's Chicken Shack gold was it goldfinger is that the name of that punk ska band i think it's goldfinger that sounds familiar who else oh man i think 311 was there so were you into like that type of music or like how'd you end up there oh yeah man well that was the thing it's like i i grew up mostly like in small towns and yeah so it was like all just for for me it was all radio radio and mtv so that's all i was into uh i didn't get into like electronic music until like way later uh and then like the first thing that i got into was was jungle like yeah it was, but like i got into the hard jungle first or like the weird jungle like, like the a- break core type of jungle like apex twin jungle okay yeah and uh <laughs> idm yeah idm <laughs> exactly intelligent dance music i've always had a problem with that label it's just like it sounds <laughs> snooty you know then what's the rest it's like idiot stupid <laughs> stupid stupid deal yeah <laughs> stupid yeah i uh that's actually like a good little jumping off point because i always go into origin story as well mm. so you started listening to jungle yeah the harder jungle yeah the more technical jungle yeah um how did you start producing like what you know were you listening to stuff and then decided like oh yo i could do this i started producing because well i've been playing guitar since like i was 11 and well you know like i had like this idea that okay if i want to record then like you have to go you have to have money to go into a studio and i mean well you know that was like the dream right but uh let's see when i was in college i worked at this sushi bar and and I met these two brothers that like they actually made beats using a, a PlayStation. Okay, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, <gasps> like there, there was the I don't know. There was either some game or I don't know what it was, but like they made beats on the PlayStation. It was some game. I don't know what they use. It. Okay, know. wait. Could it have been Timbaland had a game? I think it was for the PSP, mm-hmm. but it was called Beaterator, and like it was like a DAW. But maybe no, this was no, no, no. This was different. Yeah, yeah. This one was different. But uh, so one brother used that, the other brother used uh, Reason. So I mean, I had a computer, so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll buy Reason, and I got it from like off a musician's friend for like pretty cheap. I think it was like one fifty or two fifty, because like they were just about to drop the new version of Reason. So I was like, okay, shit, I'll start. Oh wait, can I curse? Or yeah, you can okay, curse. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, did that. Uh, at that time, though, I really wasn't into like electronic just yet. I was listening to bands like uh, Radiohead a lot, and they were drifting into like the electronic realm, like pretty pretty heavy. So I was like, "Well, okay, this this is actually kind of cool, right?" And I started listening to other, uh, no, excuse me, uh, instrumental bands like uh, Explosions, Explosions in the Sky, Mogwai, Saxon Shore, Album Leaf, you know, those kinds of bands. And not, it, that stuff like resonated with me. I think I was also getting tired of like uh, music with vocals. Like I don't, I don't, it just wasn't hitting me as hard as, as it used to. It, no, nobody was saying anything interesting anymore at, you know, at that time anyway. Are we talking about like pop music predominantly or just like vocal music? Uh, just vocal music, I think, in general. Like uh, yeah. like you could do without it. Yeah, exactly. So that was kind of like a good little uh, segue or something, you know, just like, okay, well, now I'm tired of this, so maybe I could just l- do instrumental music. So that's what I wanted to do originally. I wanted to make instrumental music. And then when I found uh, like Jungle, like stuff like uh, Aphex Twin and Square Pusher, 
uh was it mouse on mars stuff like that like i was man like how are they doing this stuff so i, I got really obsessed with it and then like i just you know really like discovered like the breaks and stuff like that i was like okay well maybe and i wanted to i wanted to do that i wanted to be like them i uh, i didn't have those kind of chops man like that was just next level that's some nerd nerd thing you know <laughs> especially then i mean like i don't no, how, what what year was this roughly? Two thousand seven. Okay, no, so two thousand six, two thousand something like that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, that's that's in a time where the tech was just not people weren't producing like they are now. No, no. So you yeah. really had to know how to do that and reason. No, every yeah, time yeah. I've seen it, it looks complicated. R well. I th I think like all right so people like uh like uh Apex Twin and Square Pusher they were using like uh different programs and like they were actually like programming their own stuff like designing their own effects and stuff like that through like one of the like the the languages that you had to learn to use these programs I I don't know like I maybe it's because i started with reason and i sat down and like you know learned it 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 was easy but i mean i think it just depends on like what you start with i i think i don't know i also i also kind of work yeah. with with ableton and ableton is pretty cool too it's just you know getting used to it but yeah, yeah what you were saying about apex twins and square pusher how they were designing stuff i feel like they were probably designing some of that stuff First of all, because they're nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Second of all, because there probably weren't tools and they were like, okay, well, I got to figure out how to make these. Now there's a million plugins. There's a million yes. things that you can use. Exactly. To, so it's great. I mean, yeah. that's amazing. But probably back then they were just like, all right, well, I got to learn this coding language because yeah. like, otherwise I'm not going to do the things that I envision. Exactly. Exactly. So when you kind of said you were starting to like make some breaks chop up some stuff like that like what was the first genre you were producing i was trying to make jungle trying to and then uh kind of got a little bit more into hip-hop using like a lot of samples that was then i wasn't too good at that because oh, man i didn't have the money to buy like to, to spend on records you know i'd go to like goodwill and go for go thrift store shopping with a with a buddy of mine but like i was just like ah, i'm not too good at this so i just kind of moved on and that same friend he played for me the uh the infamous uh bbc radio dubstep wars mix mm. and he was like hey man you, well you like uh oh uh screw i was like yes yeah, i mean it's okay right i mean if i was living in louisiana so I, like i would hear and you know it's like cool. screwed and chopped yeah and uh, it's like, well, this is kind of like the the UK answer to that. And I was like, I don't know if that's like, a, you know, like a good comparison. But like he played it and I was like, what? It just made sense. Something about it just made sense. I was like, I, and he didn't have like the best sound system in his car. But like the music just translated very well. Like, you know, probably because it had wobbles and I could kind of like Im imagine how it would sound but i had at that time i had a ford mustang and i had two 12s in it so i played that mix in the car for the first time i was just like what what is this and yeah uh, and the rest is the history. rest is history yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn i actually i feel like that mix might have been before my time in the sense that like the dubstep that i was listening to was like youtube era ukf oh yeah i would say that this was sure. more so it was like 2011 yeah yeah exactly that's what i was gonna say yeah so yeah. i actually now need to listen to this mix so this is like an infamous mix yeah yeah i think it was uh oh man i think i want to say it's like 2008 and was like 2007 2008 one of those two yeah, yeah was it more of the dub um i'll, I'll tell you who it, who was on it it's like uh digital mystics so mala koki hmm. lofa was on it scream 
that like dub Distance. police remember that record yeah of label? course stuff like that course. yeah no no no, no that's this, later this was before this was before yeah so before that yeah yeah the police came a couple of damn years. bro you know some like some dubstep <laughs> that i thought i went back kind of but no i'm old bro i'm old well but i mean yeah i mean it's just <laughs> i i thought that i i didn't know really that dubstep was that much older because i thought kind of the stuff coming up see i'm ignorant i don't no. know i'm learning we're learning together we're okay? learning <laughs> and i don't i'm not scared to say i don't know some stuff so like before that though that's where you had guys like Mala and like yeah. that were more at, at the incubator stage. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and it was it was deep. It was it was oh man, it was so good. Such a good mix. Like yeah, yeah. That's, how, that's what I can say. How were great. you finding out about this stuff? Was YouTube a thing? Yeah, YouTube. YouTube was a thing, but. I did, just like honestly like my friend my friend had a little too much time on his hands he really wasn't doing anything you know so like he would just he would just go down rabbit holes and find all this you know he was he, I mean, he loved music he was, he's he's really like a music lover so he would find all this stuff and he would just like show it to me and whatever like you know I liked I was like whoa shit man just hook me up I need more mixes so yeah so that's how I found about dubstep. If it wasn't for him, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today, really, because mm -hmm. like that mix pretty much just changed my life. And uh, when I listened to that mix, like I wanted to kind of like investigate more of like, okay, well, where are they getting these samples from, you know? So found it, you know. That was a lot of dub, like f from Jamaica, like dub, and yeah, I just started buying like anything I could find started youtubing dub and like you know uh dub selectors like josh shaka you know when i found him i was like well that's it like uh, i just loved it so like i got more into like the dubby side of dubstep that was that was like my thing yeah man that's cool i uh i'm kind of curious how you're feeling about what that landscape looks like now because it feels like people of my era who like the dubstep of like the UKF style, which yeah, is yeah. close to the origin, but not quite. Um, it feels like there's a resurgence of the original dub. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, it went, I, just, I remember like it was deep, but then it got heavier and heavier and heavier. And then like, it, boom. And then went back to like, or tried to go back to the roots. And there was like a resurgence i think like when khan came out with uh with dread like that was uh, it was the beginning of the resurgence again and then like there's there's people that still are doing like really really like deep stuff and there's also like people that are doing like the more kind of like the heavy wobbler stuff which is which is great i mean you, you need it you can't just have like a night full of like deep kind of like shoegazing dubstep you know it's, that's it's boring yeah you like, gotta will, get the crowd going exactly, a little bit exactly you know yeah. like a little bit of everything never hurt anybody man like I, that's what and honestly that's what i try to kind of do with my sets um i love doing two to three hour sets to be honest Cause really like, yeah because i like to go from like the roots of it all like in i'm talking about like uk dub to all the way to like jungle or even like footwork stuff like that i i just to me it, it's it's interesting to like to change you know yeah like just i i've been to like the all dubstep nights i've been to all even all the like the dub nights for drum and bass nights and it, i mean five six hours of that stuff is just a it's a boring. lot yeah, yeah no i agree with that completely yeah I need a little change of whatever the break is. Like, give me something to move to differently. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I saw something. I said this in a different episode again, but it was um, that people like in 24 are looking for multi-format sets. Yes. So I yes. feel like what you're doing is already there. Two to three hours of that, of one genre would be like, dude, just yeah. we got to do something else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't care how good of a DJ you are and like, you know, how good you are at moving the the momentum of the track. Right. Should track. But like, yeah, throw in something else. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, no. I th- yeah, I think like uh, that's that that is becoming more of a thing here in, in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And then that I think that's good. I think that's great, to be honest. Like, I think it's good, too. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, no, this is not speaking of which, but you said <laughs> in the U.S. And, you know, I saw, you know, you live in Spain. Yes. So yes. when did you move to Spain? Uh, it'll be 10 years. 10 April. years? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Two years ago in April. Yeah. Where in Spain? Uh, it's a city near Madrid called uh, Valladolid. Okay. Yeah. Why Spain? Why else? For love. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Followed. Yeah. Did you follow someone there? No, 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 no. I actually, I have some family over there, and uh, I met her through through them. So, yeah, it was pretty interesting how it all happened, to be honest. Yeah. So, you met yeah. someone there, and you are like... I'll come back. Was, okay. was there a period I came, I came of time? Back, I came back a couple of times and then like, okay, but then we made the decision. I was like, all right, who's, who's going where? Like it was, it was either she was coming over here to the U S or I was going over there. And basically I, I, she had, she has a solid career uh-huh. and I, and I just did whatever, you know, like, like most of us do. Like we just, if we yeah. don't have a career, we like, you know, just hop around and do some so. DJing here and there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. too. That too. But yeah, uh, so yeah, and it just, it, it made sense for me to just go over there. Yeah. I, I didn't really plan either to like, um, uh, make a, a quote unquote career out of DJing. It just, it just happened that way. Uh, yeah, Spain is like actually pretty, pretty, uh, tough economically. Mm-hmm. It, it, like if you're ask if like, if you ask me like, would it would it is it good to move to spain i was like no not if like you're trying to like find a good job or anything like it's, it's not spain's not the place to go so is it that there's a lack of jobs or it's just that they don't pay that They're well both both like uh portugal spain and in uh, italy are like kind of like the toughest place like places economically germany france austria holland those are great places to like in fact a lot of people go migrate to those countries for for work mm. so, yeah. man we're getting all like educational over <laughs> well <laughs> <Pretty> yeah <deep. laughs> yeah um i mean i just i've been to i went to the madrid airport uh-huh. and uh we went into madrid uh-huh. and that was pretty cool uh-huh. um i'm actually gonna be going back to spain if you got any recommendations of places to oh. go, I think we're gonna be. Oh man! All I right. think we're gonna be more in like the Barca or Barcelona. Bar- Barcelona, right? Say it correctly. Yeah, yeah. Um, area. So yeah, if you know anything about that. Yeah. But, so Barcelona is like one of my favorite cities over there. Yeah. It's, I mean, it probably has to do with like you know you're right next to the beach, you know. Hell yeah! And I'm all the, about that. <laughs> the food, the art. Yeah, something about that city is just like, it's just beautiful, like. But I think like I think like the northern part of Spain is actually all pretty ballin'. Yeah. Like Barcelona, you got Bilbao. The uh my favorite favorite city is San Sebastian. And it's it's just beautiful, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh it just great, gets great. me choking. I know yeah, I'm choking, I'm choking. <laughs> I'm getting all teary eyed. No, man, like the food, the food in that city, oh man, it's a, like great seafood. It's just great seafood. Mm. Uh Man, Galicia or Galicia, gotta hey, do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what other? What else is up? So you like Spain? You like living there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do. It's life. It, it's it's a different way of life. It's easy. It's very chill. Sometimes it's a little too chill. If like yeah, if you need yeah. stuff to get done, like ask yes, no, no. Really? Like, even if you're on your computer or like, so you're saying like, Hey, I need someone to come move this piano exactly. or something. And it's exactly. like, when are you going to be able to do it? And it's like, well, we got like maybe in two weeks or something. Something like, like that. Yeah. Like, uh, like there, you know, everybody makes fun of, uh, Spain. Like they were saying like, Oh, it's mañana, mañana, like tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, that's exactly it. Like, Oh yeah, we'll get it done when it gets done. There's, there's no real sense of urgency. You know how like over here you go into a shop. They're like, oh, and, yes, we'll get it for you right away. Well, that too. <laughs> but, like, they greet you, right? Oh. Like, they say, like, hey, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. 
right and over there they're just like kind of look at you like hello and then, <laughs> are you gonna like, steal anything <laughs> right and like oh, shoot i don't even think they care bro like it's just so chill mm. and yeah but no it's great it's great like it's, it's just you know you do your thing you go out uh go get a drink at 12 you know in the, the afternoon and it's acceptable <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know go for some tapas that's great you know then take a siesta right from like four to six <sighs> come on man <laughs> but you feel like at least having the taste of living in the u.s for a good part of your life like yeah. that it, it at times it's just a little too chill yeah okay yeah. how's the music scene like how's the dub scene yeah, like dub dub scene is good. Like as far as uh, we're we're just talking about Spain, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Or or and I kind of wanted to open that up to Europe because when you live in Spain, it's like ah, oh, it's pretty easy to travel to the yeah. surrounding places. Yeah. Um. Okay, so like dub is like the thing in Spain. In Spain, where and, you're yeah, and pretty much like most of Europe. Really? a lot of sound systems man like a lot of sound like the home homemade sound systems yeah 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 and so they mostly do that um uh techno is a big thing too yeah it's a really big thing uh reggaeton is really big in spain of course um yo yo hey thank you sorry we're getting yeah, we're no, getting no, no. a beer right oh, now yeah thank you thank, thank you. you munchie appreciate you uh drum and bass is also huge is dubstep the, yeah dubstep, not no, as much no 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 dubstep is is not so big in europe like that that's a uk thing uh mostly i'll play dubstep at, at festivals or stuff like that and it goes down well at festivals if you play it out like if you know if i'm playing a normal session and like i'll i'll throw in some some dubstep tunes but yeah like if you play too long they're like uh no nah, i don't like this really? too, yeah, it's too slow for them i think it's just interesting because in chicago for example people love bass music yeah people love techno people love just a lot of different styles of music like kind of whatever honestly right. it's and maybe that is the thing about the u.s where it is that melting pot people like whatever people get a little tribal about right i like techno i like dubstep whatever right. um but it does <laughs> yeah i was just gonna say it, it happens it happens over there too it happens with something as simple as dub too like well, only like i only like uh roots i only like uh digital i only like stuff that was made from like 80s to 90s uh, you know what so, what is so roots and digital yeah <laughs> Root, let's roots. do it let's go <laughs> roots is it's is very like it's more like kind of like conscious stuff like talking about like you know going back to africa repatriation all that sort of stuff and uh very uplifting music very Re- conscious repatriation very conscious. like meaning like the like, pilgrimage type of thing back yeah like go on, let's all like go back to the roots let's go back to ethiopia and all that sort of stuff to the motherland uh and then digital is more like stuff that was made on a keyboard like the casio keyboard i feel like you know the delineations of these things at least to the to the extent that i mean (laughs) how much do you know about like like you're listening to dub records and they're talking about babylon they're talking about like stuff that all this lingo how much have you learned through just soaking it in from listening to the music? How much do you actively go out to learn more about the culture? Like, yeah, um, yeah, I learned a lot about the culture just playing sessions and then just like kind of like listening to other people's sessions, like uh, kind of like the more bigger um, selectors like Channel One, Josh Shaka um oh I- iration mongos mongos hi-fi like even obf um yeah they were pretty i mean they're all about like conscious stuff 
especially channel one they're, they're they're one of like the oldest oldest groups around now and they've been doing it for a while so and josh shaka just died i think it was like last year and that left a big big hole Damn. in the scene like he i mean he he was only he was young too man he was like 70 and he he had so much music so much music and it was and it was really good very energetic very powerful i mean just put on a sound system like i don't know if people care too much about the message to be honest i i don't know uh, um but like this music like when you when you hear it on the, like on a proper sound system man like it, it when it hits you mm -hmm. you're you're somewhere else yeah you're just enjoying like the like really you you're getting hit with with vibration and it just it, it doesn't it, you can't compare it to like a you know a void sound system or hennessy or you know whatever you know it, like these these homemade sound systems like if if they're really really well put together like i mean you you feel that stuff like six blocks eight ten blocks away really yeah yeah it's it's serious how do you stand near it if it's so loud or is it just it doesn't hurt that's the thing is like it, it just subby it's like... sub it's just bass it's just pure vibration man and like it doesn't hurt like again if if like it's tuned well and it's made well like it doesn't hurt at all what are people normally doing i mean specifically maybe i know kind of what it is over here but in the dub scene in europe like what are people normally doing when they're listening to music are they just kind of vibing are they talking to each other is no like no they're vibing they're just dancing dancing and, yeah and the thing is big big difference when people got to dances it's more like the sound system that is the we'll call them the the main act not you as a dj yeah. you're you're more selecting at that yeah. point i mean you're just curating exactly what goes into the system exactly mm. and people are just like you know they're either liking it or they don't like it but no for the most part like they, they enjoy it and they're there for the music are and people the, and the sound system are really. people getting on mic as much like calling stuff out or is oh it, yeah yeah okay oh, yeah, that's yeah, still yeah. a big thing yeah yeah okay yeah dub sirens dub sirens pew, 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 pew. people making custom dub sirens yes i mean like i feel like people that do that well here are the beat down sound people i don't know if you've yeah of course yeah yeah King they, P, mm -hmm. chuck chef yeah dude they're so cool so nice like um they say they go to jamaica a lot i'm just like you guys are fucking uh, they're like they, see, this is the thing man it's like there's a divide between and and i think like a bridge and a crossing ground between people like myself who like dubstep and like sounds that are analogous to this but the dub night and like the the purely dub versus the step is i don't know like you can as a dubstep person you can get into the dub yeah but it's just I don't know. They're different camps. Yeah, I don't get it. Uh, in the UK, that's totally different. I mean, the the kids who are like are exposed to it, you know. And I mean, come on, that that's that's where dubstep came from, and that's where like a lot of these new sound systems are coming from. So they're exposed to it all. Yeah, you know, like yeah. if I don't. Uh, the people that I know that make dubstep in the UK, like they're all about going to these big dub nights and they're happening all the time too. I mean, so, so there's everything going on over there. So there's tons of stuff. Yeah. There, yeah. I mean, I think there's more of it in the States now, but anyway, it's just an interesting thing. That's yeah. almost newer to me. And I'm always trying to learn more about it because in I, turn, yeah, it is any, any day now it's gonna like really like pop off. Like, and there's I mean there's beat down, there's uh uh steel yard sound in Cleveland, there's uh Spook and Headway in uh Wisconsin, Shout out. you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's 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 blowing up. The sound system thing is blowing up, you know, and it's and I think like more and you know, and, and they're pushing more like kinda like the, the dub sound and they're 
events are are like growing you know so like i, I think like more people are gonna be like oh okay well hey this is where that stuff comes from or jungle i mean it really does all come from dub you know if it, if it wasn't for dub like these techniques that like we use to make this music that we love wouldn't exist i mean even like rock or any, you know there's dub mixes dude for all this for all this music there's the, dub mixes the know? farther like, i go into like learning about music the more you realize like how like jamaica had such a substantial um impact on music yeah. it's just in, it's incredible yeah. I, and yeah. I, I just feel like there's such a wealth of knowledge that I still need to learn. So I'm yeah. not even going to try to like sit here no, and no, no, report that, yeah, that I know. <laughs> yeah, there's and there's a lot that I I still need to learn about it too. I, I just know like scratch the surface of it. Yeah, I, mean, I feel it. like even just collecting records, collecting dubs, like and listening to the music, that's part of the the learning. Yeah, totally. Like you don't have to know all the players and the characters. No. Like it's important. You could just sit there and appreciate it and be like, "This is fucking cool." Yeah, you know. And then you spin the music. I don't know. Yeah, agreed. Anyway, all right. Let's uh, <laughs> let's move past the dub talk. I'm sure we'll come back to it. <laughs> um, I want to talk about moonshine. Sure. What do we got going on there? Moonshine, man. Uh, actually, moonshine is helping me launch one of my labels i have two so i have uh they're helping me with one i've been doing a lot of work for moonshine like in you know in the past few years uh haven't done so much for them lately but you know um i think just because like kind of focusing more on my stuff they're uh, they're a record label yeah they're a record label from poland and they push more like the dubby side of dubstep okay uh, and also just some dub stuff, but like, yeah, more like the forward thinking stuff, uh, with dub stuff, but yeah, so, and they're still doing it. Uh, this like their 15th year anniversary actually. So they're doing shows around Europe, you know, promoting it stuff like that. Yeah. Nice. How are they helping you in terms of your own record label? Uh, do they, do they print records? Like, is that part of Yeah. Well, like uh, when I mentioned the idea to uh to I mac guess i should say press <laughs> press press yeah. uh when i mentioned the idea that you know that I, you know what i wanted to do he's like uh max says to me he's like well can i get on this project i was like okay yes yeah, sh- really i was kind of surprised you know like i didn't you know i well, wasn't expecting anything out of it you know i was just like all right so like yeah man i mean well what do you want to do he's like well let's you know, I just help you press it. Like, how many copies you want to do? I was like, I don't know. What do you think? Like, three hundred? He's like, Yeah, sure. What do you have? So I sent him like some music. Oh, this is great. And this is like, uh, this label is is called Unfold, and it's gonna be like not genre specific. It's gonna be whatever, my own stuff. At least for the time being, just my own stuff. I don't want to do like any of this bureaucratic and listen to the people's stuff at the moment. It's just my stuff. And it's going to be like deep, whatever, just as long as it, you know, sounds good. I mean, in my opinion, if it sounds good, (laughs) but yeah. So yeah, he wanted to get on it and the first record should drop in a couple of months. All seven inch format as well. It's not going to be 12 inch for the time being anyway. How does that look financially? And like what, you know, it's just the basic principle of like, I make this many, it's going to cost like, how many does 300 records cost? Uh, do they have like cool, like, are they like different colors and does that cost more? Yeah. Okay. All right. No, okay. Let's, let's, let's get into the financial. All right. So the more you press, yeah, the, the, the better it comes out. Kind of, you know, like like with everything, if you buy more, then like it gets, the, you gotta the price buy gets a bulk. A, yeah, yeah, Costco, uh, yeah. Sam's deal, right? <laughs> right. So with that, uh, then you either get a you know nice artwork done, or you just go with the plain white sleeve. Plain white sleeve is kind of hot though. Plain white sleeve is pretty, and then you can do the hand stamp. You just and that's and that's money saved too. So yeah, you can just go different routes, man. You can get it colored. And that costs a, cost a little bit more, but uh, three hundred. 
over it should be like over a thousand okay yeah like probably i don't know 1500 something like this uh plus i mean you gotta take into consideration mastering costs you know right yeah the which, actual yeah which isn't too much it's not too much but but yeah do you have to master specific like let's say that you're just releasing something digitally right do you send it to a different mastering engineer than to no, the guy they should be able to do record yeah like uh the vinyl masters and digital masters and even streaming masters for like spotify and stuff like that they require a different type of mastering do they yeah so they're looking for like a different luffs value something like that yeah is there do you know what it is for records like is it lower is it that i do not know okay yeah. but you do send your mixes off to a mastering yes engineer. okay yes gotcha so yeah there's a lot involved with you make the track <laughs> you get it mastered you get it pressed yes and then at that point you have all these records yes do you mostly sell online? Do people come to a record store? Do you like... Yeah, th then... Well, that's uh, that's the other thing, right? So, um, if I... If uh, Moonshine is helping me, then, like, yeah, then this will be able to go to different shops. They help distribute... Exactly. Syndicate? That might exactly. not be the correct term. But yeah, they, they distribute they, they distribute to, like, different shops all around Europe. Yeah, so it'll reach the UK, it'll reach france germany all these other places oh yeah. that's that's helpful to yeah. have and Bandcamp and moonshine will have their own little i mean they have their own band camp so it'll be on there as well so yeah so it'll have a it'll have a good little reach i mean it's a test like for me this is all like a little test to see like okay well can i do it you know like can this this is a good idea yeah and it was it's been something that i've been wanting to do but something always came up like uh shoot like was I, I i forget the first thing but like yeah, the other major thing was covid yeah that's a big one you know and then just like starting to get back up and running like after covid like that was the thing i was, I was like i was like shoot do i risk it like you know i was making a living off of just playing out so like i mean i just had i know like my my train of thought just like I was like, all right, should I just save this money? Should I invest in myself? What should I do? Like, and then like, you know, just again, Moonshine offered to help with this one. So I was like, okay, cool. And then like the second label is uh, self-titled or self-named uh, Buka, right? And that was just going to be like dub and it's going to be limited copies. So that one's a little bit cheaper and that's it. You know, I make make them making them special. I'm trying to give back as well with this one too. So like, it's not just a record that you're getting. Uh, I'm working with the this guy from France. His name is Charlie, and he has a project called Mystic Wood. He also works with the OBF guys. And I mean, as an engineer, he's phenomenal. Works with like analog gear. So like, when he does the mixes and like the dubs for me it's just like it's like eargasm bro <laughs> it, it just sounds so fat and so so great so warm so warm wide everything it just sounds good and i played them out and it just sounds so good um better than anything you can make inside the box you know like in your computer like when you run it through tape and all this stuff it's just i feel level. like it lends itself to the genre yeah too you know i mean that's that's how they used to make stuff you know like now it's uh, anybody can do it and i'm not like trying to devalue it it's just like you know it's just how it is now yeah you know but yeah so anyways uh yeah so he does the dubs for me uh it's like four i ask him for usually for like four additional dubs so when you get like the record it's going to be two tracks on the record right seven inch four extra dubs a print like you could you know put in a frame if you want to uh stickers also offering like bundles where like you actually get to save some money and also save on shipping you know so i'm just trying to give back man like i feel like i have have a lot to be thankful for especially especially now man like times are tough 
Uh, yeah, just trying to see like what I can do. And it's about that time anyway. I, I don't want to like just put out on my my music on other people's labels and you know. So. Yeah, I there's a <clears throat> there's two questions that I have from this, and one of them is you know you're talking about like the gratitude of being you know thankful for what you have and i saw you know there's there's some big name artists who have given you recognition mala j kenzo i mean maybe some of these aren't all artists v-i-v-e-k vivek yeah yeah yeah. yeah. uh channel one sound system king silo um i guess when you said gratitude like there's a lot to be thankful for like throughout your career how long has your career been thus far uh man i mean really i think when i started taking it seriously was like what 2009 something like this gotcha uh so yeah it's been two, twenty, one, two, two, three. so what like 15 years something like this for me now but like on and off too like there, i, I did take a break yeah bad bad relationship so i was like oh no, i'll just just take, chill yeah, yeah but you've gotten to i mean just on your instagram page i don't know if that's more recent or whatnot but some of these venues you've played are so cool looking like they just i don't know yeah. what so what is it about the, the the gratefulness are you a do you practice gratitude in general because this is kind of a tangent in the <laughs> sense that like i have been trying to practice gratitude more yeah. And just being like, you know, things could be so much worse. You know what yeah. I mean? Sometimes I get all annoyed about shit in my daily life. And I'm like, dude, everything's pretty much going right. So when you said that, it kind of made me think, are you someone who tries to actively practice that? Or are there specific things that you're like, dude, that was a really cool moment. Like, you know, I feel really lucky for. No, I mean, I, I try to do it on the daily, man. Just because like, I mean, really, like there is so much to be grateful for i mean i think i think especially like being in europe spain i mean come on man like i think was it like i think it was two years ago like right when like ukraine russia started this bullshit i was supposed to fly out to poland and i remember i called the my friend and and the promoter i was like bro like is it safe like i mean because our ukraine's right next to to poland and they're like, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, there's, you know, a little bit of activity going around, but, like, it's safe. Like, I mean, it's not going to spill over. I was like, oh, all right, cool. So I went and played, and it was a great night. Uh, I mean, I think pe- people forget, like, how easily, like, things could happen in Europe. You know, like, it could happen anytime. And yeah, yeah. So like, I'm just really grateful that like, you know, like everything's normal for right now, quote unquote normal. Is there a general like feeling in Europe that it's a little bit closer to? Well, yeah, like there's all right. Like, well, in Spain, right? Uh, uh, Barcelona, uh, Catalonia, they want to be an independent nation. Mm. so like a few years i think it was right before covid actually like they were doing a lot of protesting and a lot of rioting and that's what they were hoping for in fact one of the i'm not gonna never mind i'm not gonna even get too political on that on that part but like yeah some stuff went down just recently also that like it's kind of like stirring up the people Mm. over there so but yeah but yeah at any rate these are the other thing too i think about is like there's pretty much is out of your control yeah and another thing i've been thinking about is that as we go forward things get more and more granular and it's like okay maybe this little pocket is a separate thing um but obviously when things change there's just like this like chemical reaction like breaking off like yeah. from what that thing is yeah and man it's normally like, tumultuous the the world is is becoming just one thing man and like when you throw a a rock at this you know glass houses it's just it's all gonna crumble you know like we're all we're all connected now man. It's, it's becoming one thing but fractured yeah. right and another thing too i was talking to snake blood and he was talking about how dub music he's like 
or maybe it was more reggae actually he was like yo like <laughs> that music comes from hard times like it comes from revolution yeah that, um, i mean that's what that's yeah yeah like that's the kind of like what it all how it all started you know uh yeah revolution poverty let's go back to africa you know we don't belong here we don't well we don't belong in jamaica like we belong home you know so yeah yeah i mean you can feel it too and that's what i think i think that's what made it great i uh, honestly <laughs> i prefer like the i call it i, I call it dark reggae I, I, like it's more like moody mm. you know I, but i think that's how i kind of prefer like my music anyway I like i like my music moody it, it's just speaks to me more rather than this like this happy stuff yeah so but yeah is is practicing i mean i know marijuana is a big thing <laughs> uh when it comes to like reggae dub whatever maybe yeah, there's again there's it, like it, so many different little associated. sects of yeah, yeah. things it's associated yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh you know and then like rastafarian lifestyle and that being a religion and I, i'm just kind of getting back to like this gratitude thing do you find the the culture behind the music in general to practice a sense of gratitude or like being linked to just greater higher powers yeah there's there's a lot of people i think that uh, that i speak with that are very like grounded and yeah definitely just i mean they're they're so thankful for like when you you know go see them play uh they talk to everybody they're so kind they're, they're yeah there's humility in the, in in them you know they don't think that they're like above you or anything like that i mean there's some of course you know there's the exception but yeah for the most part like i i've i've dealt with more people that are just like very grateful for everything hmm. yeah yeah i mean because the the alternative is like you're a dj you're a rock star you're yeah fucking everybody put your hands up and like that's cool too that's a lot of energy yeah. like i i've had great times at those shows yeah, too definitely yeah but it does seem at least that an ego can get attached that easier yes yeah so yeah the one cool thing one cool thing about like sound system dub music events the the dj or selector is level with the people dancing they're not up on stage or anything there's no fancy light shows like everybody's like connected they're all right there with with each other mm. enjoying yeah there's no fancy light shows no fancy light shows maybe, i feel like maybe one light over like the the turntable maybe yeah yeah and that's pretty cool I got. I got to say, like that's yeah, it's that's minimal. Pretty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've also seen stuff where the, uh, like the speakers might be like reactive to like some kind of dark light or something. Yeah, like, that's that thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like yeah, I've yeah. seen that. Mm -hmm. I feel like again, you're just more steeped in this culture and. Mm -hmm. If anything that I'm doing right now, it's I'm trying to make this like an ethnography. Like, let's figure <laughs> out what's going on in yeah. this culture. Because I want to go experience it for myself. Oh, you will, man. Like, yeah. I mean, when you go over there. Hey, Bar yeah, Barcelona's got a really, really good scene. Um, with, the, like, sound systems. There's, there's a few of them out there. There's a good bit of record shops, too. Um... Speaking of record shops, just mm. just to get back to the pressing and stuff, how often are you playing out vinyl? Actually, like vinyl, I I'm I don't play it just simply because I'm a collector, so the vinyl doesn't leave my house. <laughs> yeah, you're like I'm not gonna. Yeah, so out of protection. Yes. Uh, how can I say this? Like, you pay what fifteen. Yeah, probably like after Brexit tax and all that stuff, 15 euros for a record that either has two, at most maybe four tracks or six, maybe, maybe. Man, I just, I don't, I want to take care of that thing, man. Like, 
I hate to be that guy, but like, yeah, I mean, I'm that guy. I just got stays home, get the digitals and take my USB stick and go play that. When you buy a record on vinyl, I literally don't have a vinyl collection at all. I'm all in the box. I'm like streaming services. Yeah, yeah. I have, I mean, I have some like files on my computer of songs that I like. Right. Um, but very different. And when you buy a vinyl, they normally give you a digital copy too. Yeah. Like with uh, Bandcamp. That's what I love about Bandcamp actually. They give you the, the digital files so yeah. you can play them out. If not, like well if what i do is i buy records from this one uh page called uh red eyes and uh, they have a reserve basket so you can buy all your records save them on this basket and when you're ready to have them ship boom so it's not like okay you're gonna buy this one record and then it's gonna cost you because European shipping is stupid. 15 euros to get it shipped to Spain or wherever. Then you got to pay Brexit tax, which is another, I don't know, depending on how many records you buy, you know, uh, it gets pricey. So yeah, I would just rather like go through this store and then just have them all shipped all at once rather than just buy one because that's usually how these other shops operate from the uk like you know you buy one or two and you have to get them right there on the spot you can't save them for later shipment i think there's a bit of um like anxiety that comes off when you put it in the cart like because you know you're like i don't own this record but you got your eye on it yeah and you're not gonna forget because it's in your cart yeah and for me, I'd be like, okay, cool. This is all the stuff I want to get, but like, I'm not going to get it right now. Yeah. It's on my wish list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to get it. Cause like, I mean, some of this stuff like they, it goes fast. It, it goes sells fast. out. Yeah. 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 Kind of like, uh, you know, Supreme, they do like, uh, I mean, Wait, the, clothing sell line? Whatever, the clothing yeah, line. Yeah. yeah. Are there, uh, <laughs> this is so naive, but like, you know, drops just like record drops. Like here you do on a limited press. Like you're only going to get so many. Is there a, yeah. uh, a certain type of record label that does it more the supreme way where it's like these are super limited we're only making 20 of them or like and it's just that i gotta get one okay now see that's a whole different that's a different game yeah uh and dub now well they started making these uh polyvinyl cuts <sighs> Is that a different type of vinyl? Yeah. Does it sound better? <laughs> no. No. And depending who makes it, it could be good or it could be really bad. Hmm. So, yeah, like uh, with these polyvinyl cuts, like you actually like when it's getting cut, right? You have to keep your eye on it because, you know, I guess to like make sure that quality is good. So... With that, like, I mean, if you got to do that with like two songs, like you, that's, that's a lot of time. So most people just like make 20, 30 cuts of this. So it's very limited, very exclusive, no digital at all. Mm. Right. So, yeah. So people are selling these things for like 35 pounds. What's the upside? It's just like God. swag. Like you're just like, yeah, yeah it's the poly much. vinyl. Yeah. It's like, it's like, whoa, like there's only 30 copies. Is that got It's one. just limited. Our brains are so dumb. <laughs> yeah. I'm just man, kidding. I mean, no, no, I mean, they are. Well, I mean, we are, we are, we are <laughs> like for real. Like we are because like, I mean, we do it for a lot of things. I mean, like I used to be, <sighs> there was this brand. I mean, it's still around, but like, uh, it's called the uh, kid robot. And they used to have like a lot of like limited, limited like merchandise, like shirts, yeah. hoodies. And man, like if if I could get it, I got it. Cause like there's only like maybe like a hundred of the, those items made or whatever. But I mean, we do it with shoes. Yeah. You know, uh, we do it with so much stuff, man. It's like, I mean, this isn't any different. It's just, it's what you're into, you know? No, you're right. I, I'm not trying to poo poo anyone's whatever, same here, like, same here. Same thing. Here. But, uh, yeah, it actually makes me think I, like, bought this shirt at Costco. And, dude, I had this moment where I just kept seeing it. 
And I was like, I like this shirt. I'm not going to return it. But I swear, like, when you buy something that there's only 100 copies, the likelihood of you seeing another person wearing that, very unlikely. You buy it at Costco, you're gonna do that, like, that Spider-Man meme where it's, like, the, the two Spider-Mans that yeah, see yeah. each other. Yeah, so anyway, uh, I get the limited thing. Yeah. I think there's something cool about it. Yeah. I like the drops. Yeah. Sometimes people get a little too like 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 the prices don't match the value but it's so driven up by the limited yeah. aspect that i'm like wait what are we what game are we playing here you know play so playing the discox game with with vinyls <laughs> sometimes bro like i mean do you ever do you look ever do, do you collect in a way ever that it's like okay i'm collecting like pokemon cards like this vinyl is really rare and this dude on ebay is selling it for like pretty cheap like i could buy that yeah. flip it or well or keep it that well n ooh, i don't play that game if i buy something that's this for me yeah <laughs> you know but yeah. like um i've made i i don't know did this happens to me more often than i'd like it sometimes like i'll i'll listen you know i'll sample you know the record or whatever <clears throat> Mm -hmm. and uh i'll be like nah, i don't like it eh, i'll pass for whatever reason like months go by and then like i listen to it it's like man this was actually really good i try to go to like the shop and it's all sold out so i go to discogs and i'll i'll look for it and i'll be like god it's gone the, well no i'll be like oh, man the cheapest i can find is like like 40 40 mm -hmm. euros or something like for like you, like For, you were saying, two yeah, songs yeah. potentially. And yeah, like I mean, and it's not a limited thing. It's I mean, well, technically, I guess it all, it is all limited, <clears throat> isn't it? But like you know, there's like what 300, 500 copies of these floating around. But like you know, somebody's selling it. Someone also didn't use a good needle. You gotta look at Oof. the. You gotta look to make sure they're not messed up. It happens. It happens. Yeah. Like you get it, and you're like, fuck. <laughs> You know, it's just, but like, there's like a rating system on this thing too. Like, you know, they, they put like mint condition or like very right. good or yes. mint, mint, you know, yes. all, all, the, all these things. So like you look at the, also like the, the seller's ratings and hopefully it, hopefully they value the, the item just like you do. Like, you know, maybe they have, they have the same standards. That's what and, I'm saying. And they value the integrity of their profile. There you go. Their seller there you go. profile. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So is Discogs kind of like eBay for... For vinyl. For yeah. vinyl. Or you could say for music. We'll say for music. Because you could find tapes and... You buy cassettes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Huh. And CDs. See, this is what I'm saying. There's a whole realm of like <laughs> physical stuff that I, I can't like jump into because i'm fucked if i do <laughs> yeah no it's a. am not gonna say it's a habit but like yeah you definitely it, if you want to waste money <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> well this is me with like camera gear now I do, i'm just on ebay looking for i mean it's kind of fun i feel like it's my new form of social media because i try to not be on social media too much so it's like all right i'm gonna go like scavenge on ebay or yeah. like i'll find myself going on facebook marketplace just to just to be on my phone but to not be on social media <laughs> right but i'm on facebook marketplace so it's like pseudo social media yeah i don't know man i'm just trying to find workarounds i guess <laughs> <laughs> but there is this level of like that thing where i'm w wanting stuff i don't know if that's good I don't know if that's like we, a good muscle to train either. No. Well, we always want something. We just don't need it, right? Yeah. Yeah, for and, sure. And and like your thing is is camera gear. Camera so. stuff, yeah. It could benefit me in a way if I use it correctly, but most of the time I've realized it's not about yeah it's about using the tool do you actually use the stuff that you buy though like if like let's yeah. say you see a, a lens you're like like oh man it was a nice buy lens, it and yeah. like oh you use it yeah yeah, okay, yeah okay, for okay. sure for cool. sure i do cool. Cool. but then, then 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 you're fine man at least at least yeah. you're not like just collecting not, yeah, stuff yeah yeah you're not a freak like me it. and like you know you just like leave your your records there in a box and like like who 
Yeah. For, for what you know <laughs> do you have the the record wall where you can pull from them no or? no do you want I have, to do I have them? no i have them in the in in the cases so oh to protect yeah, them. yeah 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 um sorry i just said no 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 it's fine i had to tell people to be quiet i don't like doing that <laughs> <laughs> no but yeah like uh actually i i uh i kind of do the same thing with uh with music gear I had to like actually check myself because I was spending like lot like too much money on this stuff. Yeah. And the sad part is that like I just I wasn't using it. Yeah, it was just like I mean the thing is though just to talk about like collection, being a collector of things. You can collect stuff and it's like a f- way of putting your money into you know, a different, um, into different things, right? Yeah. Diversifying your assets. Yeah. But <laughs> are you ever going to sell them? That's the thing where it's like, right. I'm collecting this stuff and it's worth m- maybe more than I even paid for it potentially sometimes. Yeah. But, but like, yeah. will you let go of it? I mean, when I die, like, you know, my, my daughters will have it and they can do whatever they want with it. Like, or, yeah. or maybe, I don't know, maybe like if, everything like if shit like hits the fan and you know everything goes south and i really need the money i'd be like all right now you might have to use them as weapons just like yeah that's throwing them (laughs) right you never know (laughs) you never know i might have to be using my lenses as like a bro fucking i don't even know glass i just use the glass to shank someone (laughs) who knows we're not gonna get there i hope we don't get there i hope not either (laughs) um all right so we got some other things um just just on your instagram profile alone i wanted to go through a couple of these things yeah just to shed the light so if people go there shed the light um first thing it says the the first line it says non decor Mm -hmm. decor duca Mm -hmm. what does that mean i don't follow i lead in latin Mm. yeah where did you pick that up i just found it Hmm. made sense to me like after well yeah d- during during covid days ah uh, the very confusing times yeah i was like i, I had a lot of uh, like aha moments uh, with regards to just the way that people act under stress for yourself like just yeah well, yeah stuff a, like that. a lot of everything yeah, yeah but that was part of it too i oh, mean i hope i don't get a lot of hate for this but I don't, I don't understand why we as musicians, DJs, whatever, like we look for producers, I should say, really, we look for approval from big names. Like, uh, like if, uh, if we, like if somebody plays our, our track or whatever, we're like, oh, like, oh, let's look so-and-so played our track. Like, that's great. And like, how does that add value to us really? as producers I, I i didn't i don't understand that anymore really like i think like we had our own value with what we do i know like it probably doesn't work when you're trying to get bookings or whatever like i i, I don't know but like i mean these these people that we look up to they started from nothing like i mean look at the or like i don't know let's for example like the first dubster producer ever like he you know they were playing to crowds of like what 10 i'm sure at some point and then he just started building it from there and then they that's how they got big because like they 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 took a chance they did it their way so like i mean why can't we do that for ourselves like why do we have to depend on somebody else i don't know stuff like that you feel like yeah maybe there's a little bit too much longing for external validation from I mean, it feels good when someone recognizes. Of course, of course, of course. Especially if it's someone that you look up to. Yes. Um, but I, I think I get what you're saying on the the deeper meaning of it, which is like you don't need that. Exactly. You don't need that. Yeah, you don't need it. But yes, when somebody you look up to plays your track, you're like, oh man, he liked it enough that he he plays it out. Yeah, sure, that feels nice. Of course, of course. But I don't think we need it. Like, it doesn't, I don't know. Like, 
I feel like it depends on what you you're in this for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Like if you're in it to because you just love it and you you know you could you could basically do it in a vacuum and you still love it. Yes. So. I, I get what you're saying. I mean, dude, that's just kind of like also just the social media stuff. It's like, oh, dude, I got to repost the repost of the repost. It's like, <laughs> that's something actually I don't even do anymore. There was a period of time where it was like, I would post this one thing, tag someone, they would repost it, and then like vice versa. And it was just all like too much of the same thing Yeah, for this moment that was really not too crazy so I, I do like one repost potentially and then yeah I'm and drop done it. with that thing yeah yeah man like i used to i never liked facebook facebook is, is poison people still use it though but and i get it and uh, man i'm probably gonna get the wrong business <laughs> for you know if i'm gonna not use facebook you know but like i just don't uh i used to use facebook and if I still do, I, I use it for, you know, posting stuff about, you know, my music or my gigs and that's it. I stay out of, it's not, it's not my diary. I'm not going to post personal stuff. And then I, but I really liked Instagram for like the longest time because it was just pictures. Yeah. Then it became like more about memes and that's cool, right? I like to laugh, you know, <laughs> but, and, and now it's like, now you like to get noticed or maybe you know to get you know likes you have to follow like the uh the structure yeah like the structure like the current uh like the trends the trends and stuff i'm like that's too much bro like i'm i don't care <laughs> I'm that out. much yeah <laughs> like i don't care that much anymore you know like it's but yeah yeah oh I gosh that. so so that all kind of goes back to the not following and leading yeah it's just things. he just man just if, if if it happens if, if it works out it works out if not cool whatever yeah yeah i'm not gonna kill myself over it bro like i just want to have fun i got into music to make music not to post 10 pictures and a meme to get likes or whatever the thing is right. this week yeah no I, I feel you dude. I, <laughs> I think i've yeah. gone so this is what i've done i've gone so deep into it that it's like i don't even like all of that stuff the structure it's in my peripheries in the sense like you know when you like use your daw enough and you're not really thinking about how to use it right yeah, you're yeah just, it's just second like nature just uh, doing yeah, the thing yeah. yeah i think i've gotten to the point where i've broken through all the bullshit and i'm just like no no no. okay i know exactly what i want to do boom post that boom yeah and then i'm fucking out <laughs> yeah i mean i'll go back on and like people will get show some love i'm like yo thank you cool right All right, and then i'm out like 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 thank you bye yeah yeah <laughs> which i love that but it's it's a yeah mm -hmm. i'm i'm right there with you man um thank you for shedding some light on that you got five alley ifs in a mind and system yeah are these all record labels that you've worked with yes okay yeah so five alley is 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 the new one uh that's actually a, a drum and bass producer from france uh that's his label five alley and uh he uh, i met him uh two years ago and super nice guy and we stayed in touch and he asked me for some music i sent him a bunch of music i didn't think like you know he would like it because he's supposed to well he's a drum and bass guy but like i sent him you know dubstep and this sort of stuff he's like hey uh you want to release it on my label i was like yeah cool let's do it and then we came to an agreement and it's actually coming out uh in a couple of weeks uh multi-genre ep it's like uh like two dubstep tracks two no three drum and bass tracks and one is kind of like uh 80s kind of like synthy style track uh, in like drum and bass tempo like yeah i think it was like 170 or something like that but like probably one of my favorite tracks in on that record but yeah yeah nice you uh, said that's coming out in a week yeah like uh so march this will uh, yeah uh, sorry march, march 15th march 15th probably this is gonna be out already so go check it out yeah <laughs> um yeah cool and ifs cool. infernal sounds 
Uh, yeah, one of my favorite uh, dubstep labels. Uh, Infernal Sounds. Infernal Sounds. They they had a or I don't know if they have or they had a YouTube channel that came out around the same time as a uh, UKF. Mm. And yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, dude, I, I, I every time I do one of these, I'm like, damn it! Now I got to do so much research. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, but I'm just right. like, like that mix you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. going to check that out. Mm -hmm. I need that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remind me, and I can send it to you later. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Well, <laughs> cool but yeah uh in a mine in a mine is like one of the the big big um uh, dubstep labels at the moment uh very like f like forward thinking stuff that's coming out on their label and system systems you know been around for a while now and like they always push things forward with with dubstep as well but like yeah no no real format you know the uh vivek he he you know he wants to push good music and sometimes it's just it's different you know like a good different you know this doesn't follow like a format so doesn't follow yeah. a specific genre exactly. exactly exactly is it within dubstep or is it still like just like it could be whatever yeah uh no country oh <laughs> no, no country no no country no country dub <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's between like dub and dubstep. Okay. I, I haven't heard anything in the 160 plus realm. Uh, if anything, I've heard like, you know, there, yeah, there are some dub, there is a lot of dubstep, uh, and also, uh, we could say a little bit of dub techno. Ooh, yeah. I love dub techno. Me too. Me too. It's so good. Oh. Dude, I found Basic Channel like a few years ago. Maybe four years ago. Mm. Mm. So good, dude. Mm. Mm. And then I got into how they're actually like, I, I forget the names now, but they had an old group. They had like different, a couple names. Yeah. And then there was the one guy and then they had a record label. Yep. And I was just like, yes, I love all this lore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, have you heard of uh, Echo Chord, like the label? Out of that Denmark? sounds real familiar. I've probably run into that just through my like dub techno research right. days, whatever, yeah. like just going through stuff. Dude, you know what I love dub for? And this might be just specific to my climate. Probably doesn't get as cold in Spain, I would assume. But like in the winter, mm -hmm. dub techno is my jam because it's just like, I'll be outside. There's like not many people around. I'm kind of out there alone, potentially in the snow. And it's just like perfect for... Yeah because yeah. it's like dead like the winter is just dead there's yeah. people out but no one wants to be outside yeah uh no no i completely understand uh when i'm like okay like on system my, my last release on system was dub techno like i like dub techno dub techno mm. now 140 is like it's 120 there's even like a, I think like an 80 BPM. Yeah, not the there. fast techno. No, 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 no. Uh, and see, what I like to do is like I like to, and and I mean I'm not the only one that does this, but like I I, I like to put in um, like atmospheric sound, like natural sound. Yeah. So like water. Uh, oh, on top wind, of it. Yeah. Huh. Like oh. wind, uh, rain. Like I'll record rain. Uh yeah oh you're yeah. talking about like when you make like, yeah dub techno. okay yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i thought you were talking about like you put on a dub techno track and then you add oh no 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 like no, you got no, a little sorry, fountain no 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 no. <laughs> no 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 so like when i actually like produce it like when yeah, I yeah, do, yeah i like okay. to put the like this this sound in the background and like yeah it adds a different feel to totally like, yeah, the yeah, texture yeah. it's all about the texture yeah. man yeah 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 so like yeah on on snowy days man like when if you just hear like you know yeah it's the best dude it's such a cool genre and i feel like i'm totally moving into that 
uh, yeah. stereotype where it's like you get older and you just start <laughs> listening to like yeah. real minimal yeah. shit. But no, it's it's good because I can put it on, not focus on the music because I've I've broken my brain in the analytical sense that when I listen to music, it's hard for me. When I first started listening to music, I just listened to it and be like, this is cool. It's like a drug. Like, right. I put this song on when I am want to chill. I put this song on when I want to get hyped up. Now, I'm like, okay, this song's cool. Like, what's happening in the song, you know? Yeah. It's hard to like, put down. Yeah, like you're actually, like, listening, listening. I have to, like, get to the point where I'm, like, borderline the same thing I do if I meditate. Where I'm like, I don't, yeah. I'm not going to think about this song. I'm just going to let it come through me like go through me yeah exactly i I think like uh i forget who i who was talking to about this but yeah like it's like you're in a trance but it's not trance music it's just like you're just like wow this is great fantastic yeah 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 Yeah. it's i feel like with that kind of music like because the track will be like 20 minutes or something and i just (laughs) put it on and i'm just like okay some of them are yeah some of them are like not not exaggerating like yeah i'm just like wow like i love it it's great but i can't commit that much time like it's just... i'll put it on when i'm just doing other stuff it's like right. yeah it's like just ambiance almost yeah 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 yeah, yeah. For sure. but yeah okay i'm glad we got into dub techno a little <laughs> i fucking love dub techno yeah. there's also like dub house that i've found that's yeah. kind of interesting yeah, yeah. too it's just got all those dub sounds you mm-hmm. know Yep. Yeah, slap back echoes, some noise, fucking all that good stuff. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so one thing we also wanted to go over was the merch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hard transition to oh, merch. merch. <laughs> um, I see that you have a shirt here. It's like the parental advisory warning. Yes. But Babylon uh-huh. advisory warning. Conscious teaching. Yes. Um, What is the idea behind this? Also, maybe you could... It, enlighten us to the concept of babylon is that just like heaven no or is it home quite the quant the 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 quant the the contrary sorry god i'm so naive and i'm I'm sorry but people we're gonna learn together so babylon is the system wow couldn't have been more wrong sorry (laughs) is the uh it's the government it's police and basically like corruption mm. so um uh, on the first book of record uh i have killer p on it and basically he just he he goes all out on this one so i felt like it was actually like quite appropriate like I, he doesn't curse or anything and so it's like it's like you know these these old hip-hop records i think i don't know if they still do it but like you know they used to have like the big stickers like said like parental advisory explicit lyrics oh, or yeah. whatever right so like that, that that was my take on it like he was just saying how like like all right the system's corrupt police are corrupt like something's got to change but like oh man it's like i i really honestly i just can't wait for people to hear it um but yeah like so my thing was like okay on this record like we gotta do something like that um so i was talking to him about it i was just like man like what do you think about this like does this make sense he's like all right we put like babylon advisory so it's kind of like parental advisory but babylon advisory like the cops or like the government probably doesn't want you to hear this you know because it's truth and i don't trust the government for shit i don't trust police for shit so and yeah uh, conscious teachings is uh in reference to everything that babylon does not want you to to listen to they want you to believe what they're saying which is lies conscious teachings is everything that like is love respect understanding or as rastas would say overstanding because understanding is you know under is bad so you have to overstand something um mm. you have to have compassion for your for your fellow man or fellow per, fellow person really Any, anything positive you know that's that's what Babylon doesn't want you to to have in your life they want you to depend on them so yeah so that's where that came from the the shirt and the shirt. that's cool what uh where can people 
purchase one of these shirts. Bandcamp, my Bandcamp. I actually have them on me as well. So for the tour, I'll I'll be. It's cheaper than to to buy them through my Bandcamp because it's just from Spain. So like they got to deal with well, pe- pe- people yeah. here in in the U.S. Is, is you know I'm trying to part of giving for sure for sure well i feel like a good thing to do is i have a wrap-up question all right which is we talked about your first concert Mm. but now what was the most game-changing concert you attended something where you you know you saw it and you were like wow okay i gotta like i gotta change my game a little bit (laughs) All right, so then it would have to be related to... It doesn't... Okay, so but it could be that. And then I was also going to say, it could be like you went to go see Explosions in the Sky, like right. that band you were talking about before. And yeah. <clears throat> that was oh, just man. cool in a completely different realm. Oh, man. Um, it's a toughie. Portishead was actually pretty cool to watch. Portishead? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean... I would, I don't know. I I miss, I miss playing like live. Uh, um, let me rephrase that. An instrument live. So I would, if I could take my, my music and like have act, like a band and we could play that, I'd be pretty happy. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, I miss that. I miss being in band. What about Portishead? Because they have from that's like that '90s era. Like they have that yeah. one album where it's just yeah, it, yeah. It's kind of like uh, like yeah, it's it's trip hop, right? That's what yeah. they call it, trip hop. So yeah. it's like yeah, I don't know. When they performed live, they had a band. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, they had their guitars, their synth players, uh, like the drums. They didn't have an orchestra or anything like that. Um, yeah, because I know they they did do some orchestra stuff. But uh, but yeah, no, yeah. You, you played guitar. Yeah, you said gu- guitar and bass. Yeah. So yeah. like, do you play more rhythm, more like? Lead yeah, guitar? yeah, yeah. Rhythm. I, I'm, I, I mean, I shred. Not shred. I shred. You shred like, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I, I never, I never learned theory. You know, I always, I learned how to play by ear. So like, uh, when I, I could like pick up any record and like just listen and be like, okay. And then I would, yeah, I would try to like copy the, like the solos as best as I could, but I don't really know kind of like scales. I know some scales, but like, I don't, you know, I don't solo. Like, I'm not like, I don't know who, who's like a big guitarist. I don't know. Kirk Hammett. Let's just say Kirk Hammett from Metallica or whatever. Whatever. I mean, he's probably not that good, but anyway. I think they're good. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They're, uh, they're okay. Let's yeah. just you know, they, they have some hits. Yeah. They got you some. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> yeah well also you know since since you i feel like you might have had one of the longer careers out of the people on this show some people are just starting out some people are you know been in it for as long as i have 10 years whatever um i wanted to ask you about like your your favorite show in the sense that one that you've played because we talked about ones that you've attended but right what was like a one where you just felt like it was really special whether it was the crowd the system the music on that night oh man the other performers uh the venue well, <laughs> sorry I'm just no, no, no 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 <laughs> uh actually I, I i think i know which one um i played at this uh this squat in uh in milan the the sound system wasn't the best but man, the vibes on point. Yeah, man, it was like uh, it was me and, and this other. Uh, he was actually a, a dubstep guy from from Estonia. They had invited him as well, and we were like really like the only two like headliners. Uh, man, uh, there must have been like four hundred people at this place and like i mean it was my first time playing there like in italy actually it was my first time playing and like i was like wow that's all i can say what what yeah. was the venue uh or like it, what what was it, it like it has a name but I, I totally forgot the name of it uh but yeah it's just a squad it's like uh they call it a cultural center 
so like actually people do live there you know like homeless people live there but like oh uh, a squat so yeah, was it yeah, kind of yeah. like a warehouse or something? yeah yeah okay. yeah but uh but yeah and then but you can do like events there and stuff like that and yeah it was so many people and and people just dancing the whole the whole time it was there was like no thinning of crowds or anything it was like packed the whole time how late did it go how long did you play i played like two hours and the thing went on to like probably five five a.m wow yeah yeah that's dope that's that that's that's the other thing too like a lot of euro parties man they they're they're done at like six six a.m seven a.m they start at like 11 so you so, gotta get that um that midday nap yeah like if you it don't helps. it helps it yeah. helps i mean the drugs if there's drugs if there's involved, drugs, that might if, help and, too. If, and if that's your thing if that's your thing then yeah. yeah yeah but i feel like that siesta might be crucial <sighs> otherwise you're, <laughs> you're not gonna make it till six yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's cool yeah that's what i always hear i don't know in my mind i'm like yeah that seems a little late or a little early but like but when you're enjoying yourself like it's it's it, good it goes by fast man like yeah. it really does go by fast yeah that's what see that's what i try to remind myself like if it's a good vibe i could stay there for a long time mm. but i don't know sometimes i go to stuff and over here and it's like about it's like scene stirs like they just they're kind of there because they're trying to be seen and right anyway i'm not trying to no poo poo yeah, no poo poo. No poo poo. Whoever made up that term, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> anyway, um, all love. Um, yeah, man. I feel like we can we can do a little rap. Just uh, any shout outs. Oh to... man. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're gonna. It's too many. Too many people to shout out. But like, really, basically, all the sound systems in the U.S. right now pushing the shit. Like. Y- keep doing it yeah. shout out beat down just because beat that's down. that's the one that i know in that's, chicago that's the locals that's the local yeah. those are those are the homies and yeah and ronan i mean that i don't of know course. yeah of course. of course well yeah yeah but of course that's the coast without seeing yeah um uh, yeah and to all the producers that are like you know making music keep keep doing what you're doing and just do it don't give a fuck what anybody else says just do it do what makes you happy that's the thing like do it because you want to do it not because like you know you're trying to follow a whatever that's that's the that's the secret sauce right there yeah that's the key um where can people find you like social media wise best place instagram still i don't post much but i mean that's the best place that's the spot okay yeah also, I don't need, I don't know why I don't say this, but like links, there will be links. <laughs> so go check that out. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, dude, thank you so well, much for coming no, through. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, of yeah. course. I know that you just got off a long flight too. So it's like, I'd rather be doing this and like going to sleep or whatever, man. Like this, this, like, this is cool. I like, I like talking to people. Bro. Good shit, man. Yeah. yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no i hate talking yeah, to people and i have a podcast but i gotta do it <laughs> no um all right guys well um if you made it this far thank you so much for listening we'll catch you next time peace bro thank you so much man <laughs>